action. Okay, so this is chapter two, section six. And we're going to talk about more about powers. This is going to be negative and fractional exponents. You may have seen negative exponents before, um, especially with things like scientific notation. So it might look familiar, but you probably haven't learned about how it works and what they do. Um, before we hit negative and fractional exponents, I want to talk first about zero. And so you'll want to star this and put this in a box. Anything taken to the zero power is one. So you don't have to do any work when you see something's taken to the zero power. That means the whole thing becomes one. So if we have three to the zero power, what do you suppose that equals? One. One. If we have three plus x to the zero power, what's being taken to the zero power? X. The x, so x to the zero power is one. one. And so this means three plus one, which is four. four. If I have four x to the zero power, remember that exponents only affect what they touch. And what is this zero touching? The X. the X. So only, it's only X to the zero. What operation is in between the four and the X? Multiplication. Multiplication. So this is four times X to the zero, which means it's four times what? Four times one. Four times one, which is? Four. Four. Sometimes you'll see a large grouping of things. Let's do 2x to the third y in parentheses to the zero power. What's being taken to the zero power now? What is the zero touching? Everything. It's touching the parentheses, and so everything that's in here is being taken to the zero power. So the whole thing equals 1. And we'll talk in a minute when we look at the negative exponents as to why that happens the way it does. Okay? But for now, that's the important thing. Okay, let's go on to negative exponents. And the best way to explain how negative exponents work is to look at a pattern. So we're going to start out by looking at 2 to the third. And what is 2 to the third? 18 because it's 2 times 2 times 2. What's 2 squared? 4. And 2 to the first? 2. Do you see what this pattern is doing? Look at what's happening as we're going down here. What's happening each time? It's it's dividing by 2. Dividing by 2. So if I want to go down, if we look at the pattern of our exponents, we have the third, the second, the first. What's the next one going to be? One. Zero. I mean, two to the zero. And if we one. divide by two again, what do we get? One. 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 That's where that comes from. Anything to the zero power is one, because you're multiplying and dividing by that base number. And then we're going to go down again, two to the negative one. One, one half. Like that. One, one half. Because we're just dividing by two, aren't we? Yeah. And I want to look at these as fractions. So don't write point five, write one half so that the pattern is a little bit easier for us to see. And then two to the negative two means we take a half and divide by two again. Four. four. So we get a fourth. And two to the negative three. We take a fourth and cut it in oh, half. Oh, mm -hmm. it's just like the positive, but with a one over it. That's not very so, happy, but... So I, 
I want you to look at 2 to the third and 2 to the negative third and look at how they compare. 2 squared and 2 to the negative 2. 2 to the first and 2 to the negative 1. If we look at those and look for a pattern, we have 8 and 1 eighth, 4 and 1 fourth, 2 and 1 half. And what are those? Reciprocals. They're reciprocals of each other. Did changing this to negative exponents make our value become negative? No. Because what were we doing each time? Over and over. Dividing by two. Dividing by two. Can I divide by two and make something negative? No. No. What do I have to divide by in order to make something become a negative? A negative. I have to divide by a negative. So if your base is positive, it won't ever become negative because of a negative exponent. So I want you to write that down and I'll word it for you. A negative exponent can never make a number negative. A negative exponent can never make a number negative. So let's look at 2 to the negative 4th. What is 2 to the 4th? 16. 16. So 2 to the negative 4th is going to be 1 16. What about 3 to the negative 2? Uh, negative, or 1 9. 1 9. 1 9. Mm -hmm. 1 9. Uh, let's do one more. Um, 5 to the negative 3. 1 over 125, right. What do you notice is, is similar about all of these bases I've chosen? They're all whole numbers. They're all positive. They're all positive whole numbers. And so we're seeing a similar pattern every time. But what happens? Can we take fractions to a power? Yeah. Or what happens if it looks like this? Oh, that's one over two to the negative three. Great. Well, you can work it out that way, yes. I'm going to show you a shorter okay. way, but I do want to talk about that. What is two to the negative third? Uh, eight. Not one eight. One eight. One eight. One eight. So this is 1 divided by 1 eighth, right? So, so if I take 1 and I divide it up into eighths, how many eighths are in 1? Eight. Eight. Now I want you to look at these two things. Don't say anything out loud to me, but I want you to look at those two things and look at what happened. We know 2 to the negative third equals 1 eighth, but 1 over 2 to the negative third equals 8. I'm going to pause this and I'm going to let you think about that for a second. Did it pause? Didn't pause it. Okay, so what I want you to think about is this. Using what you just said here, then if we have 5 to the negative 2, what does that equal? And then what would 1 over 5 to the negative 2 equal? I want you to answer both of those. Okay, Catherine, what's 5 to the negative 2? Um, 5 to the negative 2 is 1 over 
And I do what's 1 over 5 to the negative 2? 25. What do you notice about these two? They're reciprocals of each other. So if it's the whole number and it has the negative exponent, it becomes the fraction. It goes down to the bottom, doesn't it? This is really 5 to the negative 2 over 1. Look what happens. It flips. But when it's the number on the bottom that has the negative exponent, it flips back up to the top, doesn't it? <coughs> Do you remember in Madagascar where, I think, I can't remember what the little thing is. It, what is the little animal? The lemur? Yeah, the lemur. And he sings, you've got to move it, move it. You've got to. That is like the song I sing when we're doing this. Because anytime something has a negative exponent, that's what you do. You move it. We took the 5 to the negative 2 and it moved to the bottom. Here we took 5 to the negative 2 from the bottom and it moved to the top. So thinking about that, if we have 1 over 8 to the negative 4th. Now I don't want to work out 8 to the negative 4th. I'm just going to leave it in exponential form. But where does that need to go? To the top. To the top. And when it goes to the top, what happens to its exponent? It becomes positive. It becomes positive. So this equals 8 to the 4th. If we have 1 over x to the negative 2, Helen, what's that going to equal? Um, x to the second. So it moves to the top and its exponent becomes positive. You can't move it and not change the exponent. Okay. What if we had, <coughs> pardon me, x to the negative 2 over y to the negative 3. <coughs> Pardon me, Maddie. Would it be y to the third over x to the second? y to the third over x to the second. What do you guys think? Yeah. Yes, because they both had exponents that were negative, so both of them had to move. We keep it in one fraction. <coughs> But anything that has a negative exponent moves. So what if I have 3x to the negative 2? Remember at the beginning when I said exponents only affect what they're touching? What is that negative 2 touching? The x. The x. So what needs to move? The x. The x. What doesn't move? The 3. The 3. So what I want you to do on ones like this when they start getting a little more complicated is circle anything you think you're going to want to move. And leave everything else where it is. So that means the 3 stays on top. And where does the x to the negative 2 go? To the bottom. And does it stay x to the negative 2? No. Yeah, it becomes positive 2. Yes. Okay, what if um, it was like x, x to the negative second? Is that how you say it? Sure. Okay. And then y to the third, under, like under. Okay. x to the negative 2 over y to the positive 3. Mm -hmm. So what has the negative exponent? Um, the x. The x. So I would circle the x, and it's going to move. But is the y going to move? No. Now I'm moving this to the bottom. Can I leave a blank in a numerator? Yes. No. Have you ever seen a fraction with nothing on top? No. No. What What do you suppose is going to be there? A one. So this becomes one over y to the third times x squared. Because this is all multiplication and division that we're doing. So when we do that, you're you're dividing and you end up with a one. The math that goes along with this working it out and not using the trick is very time consuming and tedious, which is why we're not really doing it. The main thing is to know that you need to move it. Okay, I'm going to pause this and we're going to do a little bit of practice on the whiteboards.